guys so um, I'm gonna do a video that I filmed already yesterday but it was so dark when I filmed it so I don't want you to have to go through a video that's almost dark so we're gonna do a recent reads video because it's been a while since I last did a video like that I was kind of busy with vlogmas and various stuff and I'm still very busy with various stuff but I have to read 60 books in 2016 so yeah, some of these books I read in the end of 2015, however. So the first book is called Thalysio, le système physique et intellectuel de la nature. It was written by Jean-Antoine Glazes in the 19th century. It's a book that's really not well known. It's an author that's almost forgotten now. And the only reason why I've heard of him and the reason why I'm reading his book um, is because of my dissertation. Because this book is basically not a fiction, a fiction work. It's a sort of essay, in, I suppose you could say. Um, to defend and promote vegetarianism. It's mainly to defend it because it's a response to um, Buffon, who was a very famous French scientist and was, however, quite ignorant about uh, vegetarianism. So this amazing guy, Jean-Paul Glazes, who is unfortunately not well known at all, um, wrote this amazing book, a book, it's not really a book, but you know, um, about why vegetarianism is the best for us, why we are uh, physically designed to eat that way and even though it's a lot of science it's also a lot of spiritual stuff and has a lot to do with how if we were all vegetarian slash vegan you know societies would be more um, peaceful and more about equality and that kind of stuff and then a real literary uh, work this time it's called Le Bateau Usine it was written by Kobayashi Takiji and um, I talked about this book I think in my shelves video which is going to be linked somewhere and this book was really really good, I loved it. It was really sad but also really really interesting. The book is about um, poor workers in Japan who have to work on ships basically and um, it is a very raw, a very intense sort of style for a very raw and intense story and I just really, really, really enjoyed reading about that. So if you like Japan, Japanese culture, Japanese literature, and if you're interested in everything that has to do with socialism, communism, and uh, social justice and workers' rights, that kind of stuff, I think you definitely should give that a try. The style is really interesting as well. It's a beautifully written book and it's very nice. I mean, I just really enjoyed reading it. I'm probably gonna read other books by this amazing man. It was also really nice. And I mean, he did not only write about these topics, he lived them very, very much. So that actually ended in not so nice of a way. Um, he actually died because of being tortured, while being tortured in Japan, so by the police. And um, Sakodo by Wismal, so I was really disappointed with that one. The reason why I picked this one is because it was really short and I wanted to be able to complete my goal for 2015, which was to read 50 books, and I wanted small books. And also because I really like Wismal, and he wrote one of my favorite books, which is called Arebourg, and if you don't know, that's a very famous book. That's the book he's the most famous for, I believe. And in this book, there is a, a, a character was called Desescent and um, this man is just absorbed in his own world. He doesn't want to go out, doesn't want to leave anything outside of his house because he has everything inside of his house basically. He has all the objects, all the books, all the art, all the jewelry, everything you could think of, he has that. And he creates objects, he creates new flowers, he's just collecting everything that's beautiful. Love that book. So I was like, yeah, that's gonna be great. It was not. Okay, then I read two books by Zola. It's a recurring thing in my recent reads. It's because I just adore, 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 adore Zola. I, I never really thought I would say that, but I fucking do. And I want to read all of his books, so that's what I'm trying to do. You know, when I don't really know what to read or when I'm just tired of reading new things, I just go back to Zola and it's... Every time is just amazing and better than, you know, uh, the previous time. Uh, so I read Le Vent de Paris and Le Rêve. This one is... Um, uh, what could I say? Um, it's a classic. It's a big classic. It's really like what you would expect Zola to write. It's about a man that was deported because of his political opinions that were not acceptable. So he was in exile, far away from friends, and he comes back to friends in Paris, and he's really hungry, and he finds a new job, and blah blah blah. And it's all about food, all about the mall, all about uh, the fruit, the vegetables, the corpses. Unfortunately, the reason why I read that book was about was because my teacher actually suggested I should read it for my dissertation because there's a very interesting opposition between the fruits and the vegetables and the meat and the fish in this book, how they're described. The fish the fish and the meat are described in a very negative, morbid and sad way 
and the fruits and vegetables are just full of life and colors and smells and beautiful um, connotations basically. Definitely not my favorite but really interesting as always. There's a there's an actually an extract that's amazing. It's when he's in the cheese shop. Zola is so talented that he fucking writes a symphony for the cheese. Like the cheese does not make smell, the cheese makes sounds. It's amazing, you have to read it to understand, it's beautiful. So I read Le Rêve after that and that's something I like much more than Le Ventre de Paris. This one however is very different from what Zola usually writes. It's not so much about um, um, le naturalisme, which is what Zola was about his movement. This one is a lot more romantic. It has a lot to do with romanticism, I thought, honestly. It's a lot of mysticism, a lot of, spirit, a lot of spirituality, a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions. It's a very lyrical sort of book, um, but it's not cheesy. It's not cheesy at all. It's very interesting. It's so beautifully written. It's so elegant and just perfectly sort of put together. Um, I would definitely recommend that book if you want to read something that's a bit different, something that's going to leave you... you know. And then I read... Paris, Paris, France, or Paris, France, um, by Gertrude Stein. Uh, my sister gave me that book for Christmas because she gave me a few books about Paris because, you know, I fucking love Paris. And I quite appreciate reading that book. It was really interesting. I just always like to see how foreigners perceive France and French culture and blah, blah, blah. So that was very, very interesting. Um, it was also very short to read. Um, however, the style was not my cup of tea. I guess you could say it's an interesting style and has its own charm and probably if you're not into classics like I am, if you're not into the 19th, 18th century, probably you could appreciate the style. I did not really because that's not what I'm into but I definitely enjoy reading that book. And then I read this one, Sur le rêve by Freud. I had read that previously but it was a long time ago so I just wanted to reread it so I bought it again in Paris and I read it yesterday. You don't have to subscribe to everything that Freud says. You don't have to think he's a god or a wonderful, incredible psychoanalyst. Um, but I don't think you can really deny the fact that he has made some incredible, incredible discoveries and that a lot of things he says are really interesting and relevant. And dreams are a big thing for me because, in case, I mean, maybe you don't know, but I dream a lot. I have a lot of disturbing dreams. I have a very disturbed sleep. So that's always something good to read about. So, yeah, that was my recent reads. What have you been reading, guys? Let me know and I shall see you later. Bye!